Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today for the demo powered interactive resume workshop. My name is Gunjan Seal. I'm Transformation Executive at Emerald Technology Group, Inc. I have about 14 years of experience offering clients strategy, governance, program management services on their transformations. With me today, I have Power BI guru Simon Nuss. Simon, would you please introduce yourself? Sure. Thanks, Gunjan. Um, yep. So, my name is Simon Nuss. I am the uh, Director of Data and Analytics for a Canadian investment fund. I moderate the Power BI subreddit. I've been on the Power Platform for a couple of years now. Sorry, Power Platform World Tour for a couple of years now. Um, I have about eight years of experience with the tools that make up Power BI um, and probably one of the top SMEs in Canada right now for this tool. Yes, absolutely. So it's a great opportunity, guys. If you have any questions about Power BI or data mm -hmm. analytics in general, um, I would recommend that you please use comments feature to ask us any questions that you have. Uh, so Simon, over to you, please. All right, so let's get started. Um, so yeah, on that point, Gunjan, um, yeah, please feel free to ask questions as they're submitted and I'll, I'll pause and answer them as, as we're going. So to the audience as well, yeah, just write in your answer and I'll try to answer it as quickly as possible. So um, today what we're going to do, you should be able to see my screen right now. Uh, Gunjan, can you confirm that you're seeing a Power BI report? Yes. Yeah, excellent. So, so what we're going to try and make today is this resume report that you're seeing on my screen for John Smith. And so John Smith, he is currently a VP at Microsoft, having spent 11 years um, working for a Wide World Importers, a Contoso, and Domino's Pizza as a delivery driver. So um, yeah, we're going to try and re recreate this. Now, the data source that I'm using for this one today is going to be Excel. And let me just set that up to give you an idea. And we'll try to do this from beginning to end. So I'll actually make the tables in Excel, I'll bring them into Power BI, and then we'll make the report. Um, the idea being that this exercise is really geared towards beginners in Power BI. So people who um, have never really used it or have played or dabbled, played around with it a little bit or dabbled with it. So what I'd like people to get out of this demo is how to make data um, in a Power BI friendly way, how to load it into Power BI, and just how to make some visuals from it. Um, we're going to be adding on a couple of uh, DAX calculations. So DAX or DAX, data analysis expressions, is the language inside the Power BI engine. So I think we've got about five or six DAX calculations just to get your feet wet with some, with some of that. Um, but th we're not gonna deal with any relationships or anything like that. Uh, this is quite a, a simple uh, beginner's course. Um, but that said, um, I think that it would be easier for analysts or people with a strong Excel background to follow this. If you've never really used pivot tables or VLOOKUP in Excel, or you're not familiar with um, like functions in Excel, like some, you may have a couple of challenges following this, but for the most part, it should be pretty manageable. So what I'm gonna do um, to begin with, um, I might actually just give a quick demo on what is Power BI Desktop. So Power BI Desktop is a tool that you saw before. This one here. And this is what we're going to use to create the report. So Power BI Desktop is the developer studio. Um, and this is a demo that I, I give quite often. And I might actually ask the audience, Gunjan. So audience, to, to, for this demo to work, I'm going to need a sports team or a, a celebrity or a country or something from Wikipedia. So um, if anyone can submit a topic, I'm going to use that Wikipedia article as a data source. So Gunjan, I'll give it a couple of seconds and tell me if anyone's left an answer. And if they haven't, I'll leave it up to you to suggest a maybe like a, a favorite sports team of yours. Sounds good. And while that's happening, I'll, I'll just load a blank version of Power BI Desktop. Perhaps we could do a poll on Data Reaction. I know that Anne Fernie, uh, the CEO of Data Reaction, is with us today as well and they're helping us keep an eye on the comments there. So, Anthony, if you see anything on that side, please let us know. All right, so I'll wait until this loads. It should only take a few more seconds. All right. So I've just loaded up a blank version of Power BI Desktop. I'll explain a bit more about this tool but I'm just gonna give a very lightning fast demo on what it can do. Um, so, uh, Gunjan, um, if no one's provided a, a sports team or a country or something, um, do you wanna suggest one and I can, I can use that as a data source? Let's just give people one more second if you don't mind. Yeah. No worries. 
I'm seeing some raptors popping up. Raptors all over. Yeah, it's always one of those, isn't it? Oh, sorry, wrong one. So, oh no, raptors. It's always raptors or maple leaves or something. So, all right. So, I'm going to pick this Wikipedia page. So, I mean, Power BI is a desktop um, report development tool, and all reports they need some sort of data to report on. So in this case, I'm going to go to the Wikipedia page for Raptors on my screen here. I'm going to copy the URL. And we're actually going to use some of the data on this Wikipedia page as a data source. And this will be a very fast-paced demo just to give you a taste of what the tool can do. So the tool's loaded, and I'm just going to click on Get Data. And in this case, I know that my data source is web or a website. So I'm going to click that, and I'm going to paste in the Raptors um, mm -hmm. URL. And right now, Power BI Desktop is going to that website and it's finding all sorts of usable information on there. And it's going to present me with a, a menu of items available. So just to clarify, Simon, you've literally mm -hmm. just cut and paste the, the URL um, into this. You don't need to download any kind of data or reformat it for this. Correct. It's actually connected. You can argue that it's connected. It's connected directly to the website. Mm -hmm. And I can show you that. So we have a look here. We've got some some data here, and I'll just quickly go down these to give you an idea of what it's showing me. Um, I'm trying to find something interesting. This one looks that one looks okay. Um, yeah, let's let's go with this one. All right, so this here will be somewhere on the website. So if I search for Isaiah Thomas, Isaiah Thomas, there we go. So I'll try to squeeze it on the screen here. So that data in Power BI Desktop on the left is the data that we're seeing here on the right. So I want access to this data. So I've just clicked the tip box here in Power BI Desktop. And I'm just going to click, um, let's just load this straight to Power BI. Normally, at this point in time, it's best practice to actually transform and clean the data first. Mm -hmm. But for the purposes of a quick demo, I'm, I'm not going to bother. So I'm just going to load this data immediately to the development um, experience in Power BI Desktop. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to close this website as well. So it's, it's uh, just like this. So right now, Power BI Desktop is going to that website, and it's uh, what we call scraping that, that table from the website. Right. And nothing has changed that we can see. But if I expand this fields um, item here on the left, we see that we have those three columns that we were looking at earlier. If we actually want to look at the data, like physically look at the data that we've brought in, we can click the data um, tab over here, and that's going to show us the data that we have. And there we go. So that's the data now in Power BI Desktop. And I mean, I, I don't really know what we can do from like an, an analytics perspective with this, but just to show you, um, I can uh, drag in a name into my canvas where I make my report. And if I expand the visualization blade here, um, what we can do is we can we can pick different visualizations, but I don't think there's really any visualization I can use for this. But there we go. So there's our data in Power BI Desktop. And you know, if we had some more numbers in here, for example, um, we could uh, we could actually make more visualizations, like a pie chart or something. Uh, so very quick demo, and just to show you uh, how this works, if I click refresh, so we'll click that. Um, what it's doing right now is it's going back to the website again, and in that half second, it pulled that data and refreshed it. So we can you can almost think that this report has like a live connection to the website. Right. So that's effectively Power BI in a nutshell. You you give it a data source, it goes there, it pulls the data, it loads it to this screen that you're seeing here. And from this screen, you can kind of you just drag and drop to make whatever visual that you'd like. Um, yeah, so that's how the just in a nutshell. So that's a very quick demo. And um, feel free to ask any questions. But um, what I might do now is explain a little bit more about uh, today's demo. So I'm just going to um, close this without saving and bring up today's demo. There we go. So today's demo will be. Um, Fairly fast paced, um, not too fast. You'll be able to follow what I'm doing reasonably well. Um, it's uh, a beginner level demo, and the idea is that you should be able to replay this demo at a later time. And I always equate this to kind of like a, a cooking video, right? So if you ever watched a Gordon Ramsay cooking video, um, it's not like you watch it once and then you remember how to make that for the rest of your life. No, you, you watch the video once and then you know, in a week or two's time, when you decide that you'd like to cook that dish, you load up the video again, again, and you get a refresher. So that's much like Power BI. Um, you'll watch this today, and it'll make sense while I'm doing it. But when you actually want to make a report, feel free to check back and watch this video. And Gunjan, I think this will be uploaded to YouTube, correct? Yes. Um, yeah. So people can, yeah, you can you can watch this at a later date. 
Absolutely, um, and we'll make the files available later as well so that they can download them when they're watching it to practice with. Exactly, so you'll get um, uh, two files. You get this one that you see in the background of the already made model, and um, you'll also get this uh, Excel file from which this model pulls its data. So just like before, when I hit refresh and it pulled from Power BI, hitting refresh in this model will actually go to the Excel file and pull the data. So uh, with these two files, you can you can replicate what you're about to see in the next um, in this in this demo. So um, as you may have seen very briefly from that pop up on the screen, there is three tables of data that we're going to make today, um, all related to a resume. So we're going to make um, a table of data related to skill set in Excel. We're going to make a table of data related to um, like your an analytics lifecycle, like someone's skill um, or knowledge when they deliver an analytics project. And we're going to make a, a third table on employment history. So which companies has uh, John Smith worked at? Uh, how long did he work at that organization for? And what was his title at that organization? Mm -hmm. And I'll go one by one. So I'll begin by making the skill set table, bringing that so into Power BI and make, yep. Simon, before yeah. you get into that, uh, what inspired the design for this resume, the dashboard resume that you're sharing right now? Um, why did you choose uh, these particular tiles, this particular information? Yeah, I mean, so that's, I mean, so that's obviously a subjective thing, but um, I wanted just to communicate a story that I guess everyone can take with them and and use in their own time. So, for example, we have this visual here called Projects by Skillset, right? Um, you could make a Power BI report out of this. Well, anyone could use this data. Um, so you use this report, enter in their own data to get their own visual that tells their own story. So I tried to make these pretty generic uh, related to a resume. So this could be, you know, it might not be skill sets. You could replace this data source in Excel with something else and get the same result. Um, obviously, in a resume, you have employment history. So um, this, I think this Gantt chart here tells that story quite effectively. And this one here is a little bit unique because not every job has a, I guess, a life cycle of um, like a linear life cycle from um, gathering data to delivering a report. But I wanted to show that sort of um, that, that story there. And obviously, we've got this little map here on, on the left as well. Mm -hmm. And so this is um, if someone, I guess, is traveling quite a lot over their career, they may want to tell a story around where they've worked historically. Wonderful. Ready. So uh, yeah, so the first um, one will be skill set, and then we'll follow that by employment history, and lastly by the analytics lifecycle. Um, so that said, you'll have like an opportunity to reset um, at the end of each once I bring in a table. So if I've brought in a table and I've lost you a little bit, uh, don't worry. Just hang on the call for a couple more minutes, and then wait until I get to the next table of data, and you can kind of pick up from there. Because I'll start from scratch. I'll make the table in Excel, then I'll bring it in, load it in Power BI, and make a visual. Rinse, lather, and repeat three times. Um, so, uh, without further ado, I'm just going to drag this to my other screen right here, and I'll get started. So, I'll quickly I'll load up this Excel file here just to show you what we're going to be making. I did mention that we're going to be making this data from scratch, mm -hmm. and so where all that data for those visuals came from is these three tables inside an Excel file. We have one table here with um, employment history, uh, one table here with um, like the, the skill sets, so projects that people have worked on and the skill set that they had in that project. And on a different worksheet inside Excel, just to show you that Power BI can pull dif different artifacts from an Excel file, we've um, stored another table of data, which says um, uh, someone's uh, basically like their analytics skills. So, you know, they're very good at extracting data or they're very good at um, um, uh, basic wrangling of data. And uh, I basically set it up with uh, their, your ability to grade yourself. <laughs> and that's what this table is here. And just yes. to show you. The, so this is where goes. sort of the art comes in, right? To looking at uh, starting with your Word document resume, which is what most people typically have, um, mm. creating these type of tables. Um, so it's easy to picture the education, the experience, the skill set part. And then what you're exactly. pointing out there, Simon, is ability to find some sort of a rating system and rate yourself against that. Sure. Yeah, exactly. I've tried to come up with a few different examples. So obviously, you can rejig this this data that you see to for whatever you want. For example, you could add obviously a new row of data, and that will automatically flow through to the Power BI report. Um, so let's let's get started. I'm just going to drive this to the other screen. Mm -hmm. So every Power BI report begins with data. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to close this, and I'll make a new folder on my desktop, and we'll call this uh, we'll call the main component. And I'm just going to create a new uh, Blake Excel file. 
and uh, we'll call this um, resume data. Give this a few seconds to load. Actually, we'll call this um, resume data. So this is just a blank profile, nothing um, hiding here. And let's start with um, so we'll start with the we'll go with the analytics skill set. So if I bring up the original uh, file here, the one we're going to make is this. We're going to do it visual by visual. And so um, we'll start with this one down the bottom. So effectively, we want a, a list of uh, skills that somebody has and just kind of like a grading system against that in order to make this visual down the bottom. So let's get started with that. Um, so first things first, what are some of the elements that we're after? Well, um, we know that we want um, like the the, um, the actual skill set. And so we'll make another inside Excel called skill. And I'll just start uh, typing in some of these skill sets. So um, domain knowledge was one that I had. We had uh, extraction of data, mm -hmm. um, data storage, uh, data theory. And in fact, as I mentioned before, you could put in anything you want here. It doesn't really matter. These are just examples that I used to John Smith. Data mashup and business logic and storytelling. So uh, this kind of linear series of events here, if you've worked with in analytics in Excel and reporting, is, is should be pretty common to you. Uh, domain knowledge is obviously how well you know the system that you're connecting to, whether that's a financial system, manufacturing, um, call center, you name it. Um, extraction, how easily, I, how good are your skills with extracting data from systems? How good are your skills with storing that, that data and, and massaging that data so it re respects um, a, um, a proper industry approved standard and so on and so forth. And so a bit of a, something to be aware of anytime you make data, especially in Excel, is to always turn it into a table. And this is something that every man and the dog always forgets. They think that adding, you know, borders here and then shading here makes a table, it doesn't. Um, if you need to make data in Excel, always turn it into a table. And you can do that by clicking into table, and I'll pop this and press OK. And I always like personally just to turn off grid lines. I think it makes it a little bit smoother. Mm -hmm. So there was also a category for each of these as well. So I'm going to add another column called category. And I'm just going to enter in these categories. I had one called um, data engineering. And I had another one called down here, um, analytics and storytelling. So Simon, I noticed you're numbering your categories. Yes, um, I didn't have to do this. Uh, it just makes it a bit easier for a demo because um, in terms of the, the linear flow of this, uh, mm -hmm. data and engineering comes first and uh, followed by analytics and storytelling. Um, otherwise it would sort alphabetically and, and it, my order would kind of be out of, out of place. Okay. There is a way to get around this in Power BI and we actually will we'll use it for the skill in a moment. Wonderful. And I'm just going to go through and give myself a, uh, a rating out of 10. And I'll just, oops, I'll just punch in some random numbers here. Um, anyway, so just have some random numbers there. So that's my table. Um, I'm fairly happy with this. So the last thing you do every time you make a table in Excel, make sure you give it an appropriate name. So in this case here, I'm going to call this one table skills. So at this point, I'm just going to save this file. Um, and we're going to flip over to Power BI Desktop and bring this data into Power BI. So I'm just going to close this Excel file for now. Right, so let's load up a blank version of Power BI desktop. So the process will be, we'll pull this into, into Power BI, we'll load it to the screen where I loaded the Wikipedia data, and then we'll make the visual. Mm -hmm. So we'll do that for this table, then we'll do that two more times for the remaining tables of data. And just a reminder for everybody that Power BI desktop is available free for download online on Microsoft website. Yes, 100%. So this is a, a free tool, uh, no licensing issues at all. Feel free to download it. Um, you can install it on Mac. You just need a third-party tool that will allow you to do it. Um, but you can natively install it on PC with no problem at all. Mm -hmm. So here we go. We've got a blank Power BI screen here. And I'm just going to hide this, this blade here. We don't really need to focus on that for this demo. We're going to focus on the visualization and the fields. So first things first, just like before, I need to get data. But instead of clicking web, which is what I clicked last time for Wikipedia, mm -hmm. this time I'm going to click Excel, because that's my data source that I just made. And if I go to, I think it was desktop. Is it? Uh, delete me. There we go. There's my resume data demo. So I'm going, to, I'm going to click open. 
And exactly like Wikipedia, Power BI is now going to that Excel file and it's finding what data is available and giving us that menu. And at the top here, you see that table that we made called table skills. Right. So I'm going to click that. And I mentioned before that you should never really click load at this point. I only did that for the Wikipedia demo. So what I'm actually going to click now, and it's always best practice, is a quick transform data. And when I do this, it's going to pop up a new window, and this window is going to be the Power Query window. Mm -hmm. So this Power Query window here is specifically designed for one thing in Power BI, and that's the transformation of data. So it's to get data into a state that is easily, easily usable by machine for analytics. Um, oftentimes, data is messy. You need to clean up, you know, do find, replace, those sorts of things. What this tool does is that it'll actually store all of that for you and replay it every time you hit refresh. So what are we actually looking at here? So this Power Query window here, as I mentioned, is transforming data. On the left, we have a list of all the tables that we've brought in, in this case, just one table of data. In the middle, we get a little preview of that table. And on the right here, most importantly, we have a list of steps that have been applied so far. And we can see that it's actually already applied three steps to get access to this data. I won't go into detail on these, but you'll note that as I go through this demo, we'll be clicking a couple of buttons up the top. And when I do that, it'll actually add transformation steps. Mm -hmm. So let me just uh, clean this up a bit, make it a bit bigger. All right. Um, so what we're going to do first, uh, I don't like the fact that this is called table skills. So I'm just going to call this skills. So I, I know that it's a table of data. It's pretty straightforward at this point. Um, now, I could go through and edit this data, um, but from what I can see so far, this is pretty straightforward. Uh, I did click transform data, which you should always do, but I can just see right now there's really nothing I need to actually edit right now. Um, everything looks clean. So this column of data looks clean, as does this one, and this contains numbers. There's no messy data. So um, as an example, though, I'm just going to um, add a filter just to show you when I do click a button anywhere in this tool, it records my, my step, it records my actions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove data storage. I'm going to remove this row here. And just like any table in Excel or even a website, right, the way you do that, you click your drop-down box and you click, um, what was it, row three, data storage. And then you click the one that you'd like to remove. And when I click OK, take note of the steps on the right. We see here that, well, two things have happened. One is to remove the row that I wanted it to remove. And secondly, it's added that uh, step on the right that's called filtered rows. Mm -hmm. So this is really powerful, right? This is a, a full audit trail of everything you do. Uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure many of us have actually been in a department where, you know, they you, you have all your analysts every week. They have this giant playbook of the, you download the data, you open it up, you copy, you cut, you, you get your fingers on the data and you manually edit it. Um, those days have long been gone for about five years now because of this Power Query tool. Mm -hmm. um, this tool records everything you do. So you can easily replay it back. Um, so a, a lot of modern departments these days inside Excel actually use this power, actually use this power inside of Excel. Um, sure, I'm, I'm using it right now in Power BI, but this tool does actually exist in Excel and a few other tools, in fact, in the Microsoft landscape. And right. so, yeah, feel free to look into it if your department are heavy Excel users, because it's basically going to automate your entire department. And Absolutely. it's a standard feature. Yeah. So, Simon, at this point, we do have a question from Vineet. He's asking, data transformation seems to be a very important component in the process. How challenging is it in real life to get clean data? Do you have any anecdotes to share? Um, if you're connecting, I do, yeah, many years ago. <laughs> um, if you're connecting to Excel files, you, funnily enough, have to be very the most advanced user for data transformation. You have to employ some really advanced techniques to clean Excel data. Aside from that, almost everything else is fairly well structured. So pulling like a plain text CS uh, text file, that's a fairly well structured way to pull data. Mm -hmm. When you're a more advanced sort of programmer, you may be dealing with something called JSON and something called XML. You may think that's quite complex, but tools like Power Query can very easily turn that into clean usable data. But uh, I think it always comes back to Excel. It's, you know, Excel is the world's most famous and most well-used power uh, yeah. BI tool, right? Right. Um, they, you know, the whole world stopped using Excel and it probably exploded, which means <laughs> there's a lot of data out there and it's formatted really poorly. So I think that if you're going to um, do any sort of transformation, Excel's the mountain. Right. Everything else is a bit of a molehill. Absolutely. Thank you, Simon.
No worries. But in this case here, we're starting with a nice clean Excel sheet. So we're not <laughs> yeah. going to actually add too much here. In fact, I'm going to delete this step. I don't need it. So I'm actually going to click the cross here and remove that last step. So I'm happy with this. Nothing to do here. Nice and simple. I'm just going to click close and apply. And so what Power BI is doing right now is it's just loading that data to the fields here that you see on the right. And there we go. There's our data. So um, you would have noticed in the in the report that I showed you before, um, there was a couple of things that um, were more aesthetic. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do a couple of those to begin with before we dive into the data, and it'll also give me a chance to explain what we're seeing at the top here. So these buttons up the top here um, are just ways to enrich your 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 canvas. For example, we can add a text box, and I'll click that right now. And as we can see, we have a text box. I can just drag that around to where I like to see it, and it's going to make it as close to possible, as close as possible to the um, the resume report that I had before. And I think that was around about there, so I'll um, I'll leave that there. Now you'll note that when I click on the canvas behind the scenes, we don't have many options over here. However, when I click on a visual, everything here changed. So basically, the way this visualization blade here works here on the right is it changes or it adapts to whatever you're clicking on. And so I'm going to click on this box here, and I'm going to go to the visualization canvas, and I want to add a border to this. And so this is effectively where, where all of your formatting options are. And we'll spend quite a bit of time in this. So I'm just going to add a border to this text box. And as we can see, now we have a border. I'm going to expand the border options, and I'm going to make the border slightly gray, and the radius of the um, edges 15. You'll note that there's 90 degree angles on the edges here. I want to smooth those over a bit. So I'm going to click on that and make this 15. And you'll note now we've got smooth edges around our text box. So there's, I guess you could say, our first visual done. Nice and easy. We're not actually using any data. It's just a simple text box that anyone can type data into. Um, any report developer, I should say, can type data into. Now, also at the top here, we have the ability to enter in things like custom images. For example, you write your um, developing resume, right? So it's not uncommon to include your picture. Uh, so you can include a picture here. Uh, there's shapes, and there's uh, some buttons which are for more advanced features. Oh, I'm mistake. Sorry, ignore that. I accidentally clicked this, so I'm just going to delete that. Uh, but the shape that I want to um, get on the canvas right now is just a line. And as you can see, it, it um, just inserts a line quickly. And on the right here, we have a whole bunch of different options for that line. The only one that I'm really interested in is rotation. I'm just going to make that rotated to 90 degrees. And so this is going to form almost like that the head of my report, right? So I can adjust that to about yay, yay width. Now, the last thing that I want to do that's aesthetic and value, so uh, a, a part of my canvas that's not powered by data, is to add another text box and type in the name of the person whose resume it is. And so there we go, just like before, another text box. I'm going to resize it and just drag it up the top here. Pretty straightforward. So this is nothing fancy. Um, we'll look at that some of the options that we have here are pretty limited compared to other tools in the Microsoft landscape like PowerPoint. We can do some pretty crazy uh, shape manipulation in PowerPoint. In Power BI, it's very basic right now. You, you can't do very much. It's just, just the bare bones sort of thing. So I'm just increasing the text size here just to make it a bit bigger. All right, so I'm not going to spend much longer on this. I'm just going to turn off the background. Um, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this now. I know you guys want to, you know, you're not very interested in me spending time doing this. You're interested in me um, uh, actually doing um, something with the data. So we'll get into that right now. Mm -hmm. so, we have our data here on the right. And much like before, I'm just going to click on the data screen here just to visually see my data, just to refresh my memory with what I'm looking at. So we're going to use this um, to make that, that um, let me just drag it on the screen here, to make this um, visual down the bottom. Right. All right, so let's get started. Now, so Simon, a quick question at this point. Is it important sure. to design your end state and then work backwards from it in this case? Or would you start with data and then figure out what type of visualizations you would like to include? Mostly question, mostly the first point that you brought up. So in probably 90% of engagements that I do, I always start with a low fidelity wireframe. So that's where I sit with the client and I'll actually jump on a whiteboard and start drawing sort of like a high level. I'll, I'll usually draw like three or four boxes and say, look, you've got to pick metrics to tell a story here. Yeah. Uh, so that's kind of like a low fidelity wireframe. And I'll have that exercise for about one or two hours. I'll then take that away and in my own time, come up with a high fidelity wireframe 
using either PowerPoint or even Power BI itself with dummy data that will show them exactly what the report might look like just using fake data. So it's always best to establish what the end goal looks like just to set expectations, but it also helps you as a developer kind of arrange your thoughts and get them prepared. Sounds good, thank you. No worries. So first things first, we've got a couple of things over here. We've got category, and if I drag that onto the canvas, we get a list of categories, and it just automatically picks a visual that it thinks best suits, in this case, text. So it's showing me a table, and that makes a bit of sense, right? But if I were to drag this one here with a little sigma sign on it, that means sum, right? So if I drag well, if I drag that on here, it picks a different visual. That's because it goes, well, rating, if I show you that column, is actually a column full of numbers. So instead of showing me a table visual, I'm actually going to show you, in this case, a column chart, um, which makes a little bit more sense for something that's a, a column full of numbers. So I'm just going to drag this uh, down here and, and um, drag it out just to match what we had in our other report. And much like a pivot table inside Excel, right? We've got uh, an axis and we've got values. In fact, you should almost think about Power BI as a pivot table because that's actually where it came from. So the origins of Power BI were from a tool called Power Pivot in Excel in about 2010. So the whole engine that you're looking at here that's doing these calculations is effectively just a pivot table on steroids. So you should really think about it as, as a pivot table. In fact, I often refer to this pane here on the right as the pivot table pane. So at this point here, I'm just going to go, well, I want to look at um, this by category. Now, as you can see, it's actually summing up my rating. Um, if I go back to Excel, um, let's go here. It's actually summing up my rating. That generally doesn't make a lot of sense. Normally, you'd average a rating. So it's actually giving me the sum of this. Um, mm -hmm. But you'd average a rating out of 10, right? You wouldn't sum a rating out of 10. Otherwise, you could get 20 out of 10. Right. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to correct this. And so it by default selected some. I'm just going to say, hey, Power BI, that's actually incorrect. I want you to average this. And as we can see, the axis here has changed. For data engineering, we've got a, about a four. And then story analytics and storytelling, we've got about a 5.8 or something. Mm -hmm. That's now more correct. And now the last thing I'd like to do is underneath category, I'd like to drag skill. Now, nothing happened except for these buttons here that appeared on the top right. So these buttons allow me to drill into the data. So I'm actually going to click this one, this one here, and that'll show me that next um, layer of the onion, basically. So it's showing me category and a skill. But it looks a little bit messy. So I'm actually going to clean this visualization up. I'm not going to spend a lot of time slowing down, like showing you exactly where I'm clicking, because there's quite a few things to click by the looks of it. Um, but feel free to refer back to this if you want to know how I clean this up. There's actually quite a few steps by the looks of it. Mm -hmm. So first things first, um, we need to um, click on the visual. And then on the right here, you've got this little paintbrush called Format. I'm just going to click that. And that shows me all the formatting options for the visual that I have selected. And in this case, there's a heck of a lot of them. Right. In fact, there's so much that I often don't even use. I, don't, I, I usually <laughs> just use the search functionality these days. Honestly, so, Simon, I remember being lost in that the first time uh, I played yeah. around with Harvey. It took me quite a few hours <laughs> to yeah. learn and about that. Exactly. So once you've made your data model or once you've made your pivot table here on the right, uh, the rest of your time is basically sp spent inside right. these formatting options trying to find what you want. So once the data model is made, I'd say the difference between, between someone who's really good with Power BI and someone who's still learning mm -hmm. is that the good person knows where to go to in here to find what they want quickly. <laughs> Right. But a good tip, use the search functionality. So um, in this case here, though, I, I know that I, I'm actually just after data labels. So I'm just going to click on that. And then immediately we get the data label showing. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is that this is sorting from largest to smallest. That's not actually what I want. I want to sort it by the, the, uh, the text down the bottom, by the axis. So I'm going to click the ellipses. I'm just going to click sort by category and skill. So that's sorting it now alphabetically. Now, still, this axis is still looking a bit uh, a bit messy, and that's because there's something called concaten concatenation of the, the axis titles. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to disable this feature. Oops. And as you can see, um, it's now quite clean. So that's it now enabled. This is actually looking really good so far. And so I do note that it's actually backwards, though. So it's actually sorting descending. I want this sorting um, ascending. So now we have data engineering first, which makes sense. And we have analytics and storytelling last, which is usually the last thing that you do when you go through this, this life cycle here. Um, now, one last thing. I think this title here is a bit 
I don't know, a bit too technical. I want to dumb that title down a bit. So I'm going to once again click on the visual, click on the paintbrush. Um, I could type in title, but I actually I see it right here. So I'm just going to expand title and give this a better name. And we'll go to the analytics life cycle coverage. Oh, okay, that's enough. Um, so I'm pretty happy with this. Now I could clean it up a little bit more. Like I see that there's like um, you know, decimal places here which are un are unnecessary. But just in, just to save a bit of time, I'm just not going to spend a lot of time making this fine tuned. You'll be able to refer to the final model to see the fully um, cleaned, um, take the fully clean visual. Right. And just to show you, that's what it looks like down the bottom here. And it will take me probably five minutes to get it to that point. So I don't think I'll waste anyone's time with that. <laughs> Long story short, you're clicking around in these formatting options, making it look um, exactly how you'd like it to look. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to save this file. So I'm just going to hit save up the top. Save. Um, yep, and delete me. We'll call this file UI resume demo. So, oh, one last thing. I'd like to add a border to this. Um, I, I'm a big fan of adding very faint borders to reports uh, just because it helps the human eye. The human eye likes seeing boundaries on things. If you just have visuals kind of laid everywhere and you see it all the time with Power BI reports on the web, it, it doesn't, the human eye doesn't like it too much. We like to know where the boundary is. So, once again, I'm just going to click the visual. Go to the paintbrush, turn on the border. And another thing is that in a lot of my reports in particular, I always avoid the color black. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's, very, it's very heavy hitting on the eye. It's, the contrast is very, very strong. Um, one way to kind of dull that, that uh, contrast is just to always select a shade, or a shade of it. And so um, if I go to the border section, I click color, I can actually just select a different shade. So I'm just gonna make that a lighter gray. And as you can see, it just hits the eye a bit, a bit easier. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to save this, and there is one thing that's actually not quite right here, and this is the last thing we need to do to this table before I'll stop. You'll note that underneath data engineering, the order of these items here are actually out of order. What I would like, well, they're actually in order for alphabetical, right, because A for advanced wrangling comes before B for basic wrangling. Right. I don't want the alphabetical order. I want my own custom sort order uh, because I know that I want domain knowledge to be first. And then from a domain knowledge, you extract the data. So I want that to be second. And then you store the data. So I want that to be third. So I basically want to arrange this axis, the second axis here, according to the way I want to see it. And so what we need to do is we actually need to go back to Excel to do that. We could do it in Power BI, but it's a little advanced for this course. Um, I'm just actually going to do it in Excel for this demo. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to right click and open up that same old Excel file that, we'll revisit, that we will uh, revisit quite often during this demo. So up comes the Excel file. And what I'm actually going to add in is a new column called sort order. In fact, you can call it anything you want. And what I'm going to say is I'm going to say domain knowledge actually comes first. And in fact, fortunately, these are already in the correct order. So um, I want extraction of data to be second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth. So I'm basically saying sort this column by this column. Got it. Does that make sense? Yeah. So we're basically saying data storage will be third in the list. Compute would be seventh, for example. So I'm going to hit save in Excel. I'm going to close my Excel document. And now I'm actually going to go up here. And I'm going to go back to the Power Query screen because I'm actually, I've actually edited my raw data, my source data. I want to go back to the data transformation screen to make sure that that new column of data appears. So the way we get back to Power Query is actually Instead of clicking get data again, we don't want to do that because that brings in a net new data source. I want to access the existing table that I've already brought in. Mm -hmm. I can't do it by clicking this. I need to click transform data. And as you can see, it says there in the tooltip, this will take us to Power Query. So I'm just going to click that. And immediately up pops the Power Query window. And that's where we were at about, uh, about 10 minutes ago. Now, you'll note that we can't see the column right now. That's because these results here are cached. So it's a bit of an optimization that Power BI makes. But if I want to get the latest version of the data, I just need to click Refresh Preview. And you'll note that as soon as I, as soon as I did that, we now get the new column. So there's one thing here that's not quite right, and it's quite hard to see. We see that this new column here, Power BI doesn't know what that column is, like what, what data is in that column. Mm -hmm. We see in this one to the left that it says it's one, two, three. So it says that it's basically these are numbers is what it's saying. And these ones here, as we can see, it's, it's, um, these are characters. So Power BI is saying that this is ABC or, or letters. 
But this one here, it doesn't know what it is. It's saying it's either letters or numbers. Um, the reason is, is that uh, we need to tell it at this point. Before, right. when I loaded the data, it automatically did it for me. It automatically added these three steps. But because I'm going back to the data transformation screen, it doesn't. it's already done it, so it's not going to automatically detect it again. So this time I'm going to forcefully say, hey, Power BI, this column here is actually whole numbers. Mm -hmm. And there we go. And you'll actually note that it didn't add a new step. What it actually did is it added that that addition, that, that action that I did, it added it to the existing step. Mm -hmm. And the only reason I know that is because I've got this formula bar here enabled. And I can see that uh, in the formula for this step, so the step here has a formula. That's what we see at the top here. There it is, there's sort order. So it actually added that little piece of code to this step for me. So I'm happy with this data now. So I'm just gonna go close and apply. And you'll note that when this loads, it still won't sort this the second access correctly. I need to direct Power BI to say, hey, you need to sort these words by that column of numbers. Mm -hmm. And the way we do that, there's, there's two ways to do it. You can do it directly from here, but I personally like to look at the data. So I'm gonna go back to that data screen. And so it's already selected. So I'm gonna select the column. So I'm gonna select uh, the skill column. I'm gonna say, hey, Power BI, sort this column by sort order right and there we go so now this skill column is sorted by the sort order column here and now when i go back here you'll note that it's sorted correctly we have domain knowledge first with extraction of data data storage this is no longer alphabetical this is now in the correct order that i would like to see it in mm -hmm. and just to show you how this works super quick if i wanted um i don't know let's say storytelling to be swapped with data mashup Easy to do. I just need to go to storytelling, um, make that eight, and make this 10. Hit save, close Excel, hit refresh. Done. Wonderful. So now storytelling, I'm um, just wrong, but it's it's first and then last you last lastly you mash up the data. I might just leave that little bug there just for the fun of it. Okay, so that ends the first, I guess, visual. Um, we're gonna pull in two more tables of data. Um, I might pause there, Gunjan. Are there any questions on this so far? I think we're good so far. Excellent. Okay. So we'll move on to the next table then. So what we'll do for the next one, we will pull in the, let's take a look. Where's my, where's my other report? Oh, having some trouble with Jaguar. I've got different resolutions on my monitors. It doesn't like dragging between, between them. So we'll do the uh, this one up here, Projects by Skill Set. And I think, um, let me just double check, Projects by Skill Set. Yep, so we'll just do this one here. And we'll save the hard one for last. So let me drag this to the other screen. So what we need to do, every time we need to do something with Power BI, we need some data. So let's load up the um, the resume data. There we go, there's our Excel sheet. So this time I'm going to make, um, what was the, the project data, right? So we're gonna make the project data. So I'm gonna make a, a new table and we could make the table in this sheet, but just for the fun of it, I'm gonna make a new sheet. Um, we'll call this the existing one with skills and we'll make another sheet called project. Pretty, you can call it. In this case here, I'm just gonna come up with some generic names. Um, it's gonna be pretty boring. We'll have a whole bunch of projects. Mm -hmm. There we go, and we'll call this column project. And as with everything you should always do in Excel, make it a table. If you're not doing that, shame on you. <laughs> everything in Excel should always be a table. Um, it took me about 15 years of being an Excel guru to figure that out. And don't use VBA, please. VBA is in fact, <laughs> it's a deprecated form. I can attest to that. I, I've, I only started <laughs> using tables in Excel after I met Simon. I didn't really do it before. <laughs> yeah, it's um, yeah, it's it takes at least a decade before you realize that that's how you should be doing Excel um, workbooks. But mm -hmm. you know, you still find people with like 10, 15 years experience still not making tables, still writing VBA. It's it's really bad practice. Um, so here we go. We have our 10 projects, um, well named, and I'm going to add another column called technology. And this column is basically going to say, well, for this project. Um, I worked on Power BI and comma, I worked on Excel. Project here, I worked on Excel and I also worked on Power Query. Now I'm not gonna bore you writing this out. I'm actually just gonna copy paste it from my clipboard, makes it a bit easier this way. So let's paste it in. 
So that's effectively it. We could give these projects better names, but for the sake of time, let's just stick with this. So what I'm going to do, I'm happy with this data so far. Nice and easy, nothing fancy. Um, the last thing we should always do every time you make a table is name it correctly. So click on the table, go to design, give us the name, table, and the score of projects. So, table, nice easy data. Now I'm going to save the Excel document. Now there's a bit of a hidden catch in this data, and that's why I wanted to give you guys this demo. This is not good data for a machine to use. Mm -hmm. And I'll show you why. So I'm going to close this, and let's go to Power BI. So like before where we got the skills table, I'm also going to say get data from Excel. And it's going to be the same Excel workbook. So I'm just going to double click that. Now it's going to give me that menu again. And this time here, of course, we see the new table, projects. I'm going to click the tick box. And as always, we should click transform data. Up will pop the Power Query window. And we just want to make sure that all the data is how we want to see it. Mm -hmm. So there is a bit of a problem with this data. If I show you the final report, those of you with a data analytics background will, will understand it almost immediately. So if I can maybe drag it successfully this time. This is the access that I want. See how Power BI is by itself, Databricks is by itself, and so on and so forth. But look at what we've got here. Everything's in one cell. So how can we possibly drag this to the access and just get Power BI? So it's it's actually um, we actually need a bit of wrangling, and and this little trick here is something that I'm I'm a big fan of because to do this in any other tool that I've ever seen over over my career is a complete nightmare. But using Power Query, it's a treat. Mm -hmm. I'll show you what I mean. So what I'd like to do is turn this into this this one row here. I want this to be basically two rows. Right? I want I want row one to be called Project One, and then to have Power BI. And I want row two to also be project one, but to have Excel. Does that make sense? Um, the reason why is because I use Power BI in project one. I also use Excel in project one. But by making this in its own column, we'll be able to drag it onto the axis in order to produce this visual that you see. It'll become clear. So I'll just go through and I'll, I'll show you what I mean. So here's where the magic happens. I'm going to right click this column. And we get a whole bunch of options. We don't need to bother with these. Um, in your own time, please have a review. But the one we're interested in is split column. And we're going to split the column by a delimiter. So that's just splitting it by a character. And in this case, it's correctly determined that, yes, I'd like to split it by a, each occurrence of a comma. But instead of splitting this into columns, which is what you might expect this tool to do, I'm actually going to split it into rows. I'm just going to press OK. So this is what we get. Just like I said, we get project one, and then we get Power BI, then Excel. Project two, we get Excel and Power Query. Project three actually has three tools, so we see three rows. I'm just going to quickly bounce between the before and after so you can appreciate what happened. So this was the before, and this was the after. Before, after. So now the data that we're looking at now is actually machine readable. This is much easier for Power BI, and in fact, a pivot table to use the way we see it right now. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is I need to clean it up a little bit. I can see that there's actually spaces here. I mean, there's a few ways I could do this. Um, one quick way is just to once again right click the column. And I'm going to say I want to transform this column by trimming it. And there we go. Now the data is clean. And as you can see, it's recorded all of my steps. So I'm happy with this now. I'm going to give this table a proper name. And then we'll move this into the next step, which is the visualization part of Power BI. Right. Alrighty. So as you see on the right, we have our new table called projects with our two columns of data. And so this visual should be hopefully quite quick to make. Instead of dragging onto the canvas, I'm actually going to select just to be different the visual first. And as you can see, it's made a blank visual with, with nothing in the field. And I'm just going to drag it to roughly where it was in my example report. We'll Give it a decent amount of the canvas there. And what I want to look at, I mean, in this one is I want to look at, um, it was, I think it was project, no, it was actually just technology. So I want to look at technology. And what I'm going to do this time is something a little bit different. Um, we didn't do this in this in the previous example, but in this new example, I'm going to create a new sort of artifact in, in Power BI. I'm going to create something called a measure. Mm -hmm. And all a measure is, is a calculation. And so 
This calculation is actually pretty straightforward. Um, effectively, all we're going to do is just count the rows in this table. So if I physically show you the table, the number that I want in this case is just the count of rows. So I don't know how many rows that is, like 30. I just want the count of rows. So I could do this. I could simply just drag technology into values like this. And you see here, it's actually done a count for me. Um, but just to be a little bit different, I'm actually going to create this as a measure in the as an option in the pivot table here. And that, the way we do that is by creating a measure. So I'm going to right click the, the table and say new measure. And up pops a formula bar. And I spoke briefly about this when I first kicked off this demo, where I said this is we're going to touch on a couple of DAX formulas or data analysis expression formulas. And this is the first one. So this one's going to be very simple. I'm just going to call it the count of projects. And the formula itself will be the count rows of that table called projects. That's it. So that's the name of it. And that's what it does. And we'll press, we'll press enter. And you'll see here that we now have a new sort of artifact here on the right called count of projects. And now when I drag that into the value fields, we get effectively the same result as we saw before. But now we're kind of building up our own menu, right? Um, where before it just said projects and technology, now we're creating a menu of, of, um, of analytics. You can think about it like that. And we can build up this menu over time. And this is really the power of Power BI. It's bringing you in your data. Sure, whatever, that's pretty straightforward. The real power behind this tool is creating measures because that's your business logic. That's, that's the logic that you use to, to run your business. In this case, it's very simple. It's just a count of rows. But this language, DAX, is, is incredibly powerful. It's got about 60% parity with Excel formulas. Mm -hmm. So about 60% of the formulas you find in Excel are identical in, in the DAX language. But it brings in a whole bunch of other ones as well. Very, right. very powerful language and very quick as well. So on my laptop, for example, I could have like an 800 million row data set on my laptop. And this DAX language would give me results and render a dashboard within probably five seconds. Mm -hmm. um, so it blows Excel out of the water in terms of speed and analytics capabilities. So there's that visual right there. I'm not going to spend time configuring this, although there is one thing that I'd like to do, and that's change the colors here. Actually, so, yeah. Simon, before you do that, uh, I remember from our previous conversation, you had said that uh, you don't like the pie charts. You like uh, these, these charts better. Why is that? <laughs> so I've made a visual, right? And you might think you stuck with that. Well, it's very easy to change visuals. You can right. just pick anything that you like, right? Um, but in this case here, we've got a donut chart or a pie chart. Let's go pie chart. So there's nothing wrong with pie charts. They, they get a lot of hate in the industry. <laughs> um, a lot of people are like, oh, no, don't use pie charts. So pie charts are really good if you have maybe less than four items in it, and you're really trying to show percent of total or parts to a whole. Um, I'd, I'd almost use this for a pie chart, almost. I feel that, though, that there's too many dimensions. And so I'm just going to control C and control V. And I'm going to turn this into what I had before. Now let's contrast and compare, right? So for starters, we're getting the same story from this. I get to see that Power BI is um, you know, probably the largest piece mm -hmm. and followed by Databricks. And I also see that in the pie chart, kind of. But what I don't clearly see in the pie chart is the order of events. I don't see the, the order. I don't see that Power BI is first very clearly and then Databricks and so on and so forth. That's kind of hard to pick up. Um, but here it's very obvious. I was up the top. That's the one that's winning. Down the bottom, that's the one that's not winning. Um, and that's that's effectively what this brings that a pie chart doesn't. Moreover, with a pie chart, my eyes are darting back and forth to align the color with the slice of the pie. Here I don't need to. I get that story just immediately by looking well, where, wherever my eyes are. It tells me that story. Right. So more, I'd say that whenever you're thinking of making a pie chart, just stop for a second and think, well, maybe I should make this a, a, a bar chart. It, more often than not, it's a better solution. It tells the exact same story, but tells a little bit more as well. Um, all right, so last thing I want to do, I just want to highlight a feature in Power BI, which is conditional formatting. So I'm going to click the visual, click the paintbrush, and it's a bit of a hidden feature, and I don't like the way that Microsoft has, has really integrated this into the tool, because you, I've spoken to people who've used Power BI for like nine months, and they <laughs> didn't even know it exists. So I'm going to click data colors here, and you have to look very closely. Do you see that those those little dots there? Mm -hmm. That's how they've integrated conditional formatting. Oh, it's wow. so hard to see. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click that, and up pops conditional formatting. And I won't go into detail on the screen here, 
Um, but suffice to say, it just allows you to set, much like Excel, conditional formatting. I and never knew that, Simon. <laughs> <laughs> not many people do. So I'm actually going to say, well, I'm going to conditionally format the colors mm -hmm. based on the count of projects, so that measure that we made. And I'm going to leave everything else the default. So the lowest value is light. The, the, the highest value is, is a darker blue. I'm just going to press OK. And there we go. Nice and simple. And last thing, of course, I should add a border. So once again, click the, click the visual, paintbrush, add a border, and click gray. And there we go. Um, I could obviously curve the, the borders in these as well. Um, just to give you an example, it's very easy to do. Once again, you go back down to border. Um, most built-in visuals have radius. And there we go. So that is the end of that demo. Now, the big boy is next. We do a couple more measures, and uh, we create some more of these cards here on the left, all using the starter set. So before I go into that one, are there any questions on this one? No, I think we're good so far. Excellent. OK, so the next one. Um, so we're doing pretty well for time. I think I can probably finish in about, yeah, so maybe like 7.45, Gunjan. That should probably work out and leave some time for Q&A afterwards. Yes, sounds good. OK, excellent. So once again, I'm just going to save this. Because it's always good to save Power BI. Um, much like Excel, it does crash occasionally, although much, <laughs> much more rarely than Excel, fortunately. Um, so I'm going to right-click Excel. Same old story. Let's open up our, our data source, in this case, which is an Excel workbook. Right, let's drag it to the screen. So this time, we're going to make our third and final table of data. And this one's a bit bigger than the other ones. So um, I've currently been making um, one table of data on one worksheet. Um, I'm going to deviate back from that a little bit. I'm just going to make the table on the same worksheet, just to show you guys how it's possible. And so I'll go to the project sheet, just for the fun of it. And let's start making this, this uh, data set. So let's, well, let's actually start with the end result first to get a sense of what we need to make. So this report here is what we want to do. So I'd like to make this Gantt chart. And let's spend a, uh, about a, a few seconds here looking at what's involved in it. So we can see that, well, there's something to do with time up the top, because I'm seeing years up the top. I'm also seeing start date and end date, right? Because in order to make a Gantt chart, you have to know when the, the bar starts and when the bar ends, and that's driven by date. We also have a company name, and we have title or role um, at that company. So with that in mind, um, I think we can get started. We've got, uh, I think, one, two, three, almost well, we've got start date, end date, um, role, and company. So about four elements that we need to make in our data. So let, let's do that. So um, we had our start date, mm -hmm. we had end date, and I'll just begin by turning this into a table. So insert table, yep. Um, we also had a company name or company, and we also had title. Now I also know, because I made this, uh, we also had, um, I quickly back up here, this little guy hidden here on the left. We also had a state as well. So I'm going to add another column for state, which was the state that um, the I worked in um, for, for example, Wide World Importers. Or oh. So I'm just going to add state as well. All right. Um, I'm going to go to my other Excel sheet, actually, because I don't want to spend three or four minutes <laughs> typing this out. So I've got it down over here. So I'm just going to paste in the data that I've already prepared. So I'm just going to paste it in. Round of boy, that's not it. This one here. All right, there's our data. Dates not formatted quite correctly, but that's just an Excel formatting thing. The data is correct, it's just not formatted correctly, but I'll, I'll change that. So let's go to date. So um, here we have our data. Now, last thing we always do every time we make a table, let's give it a meaningful name. Um, work on a history. Um, you have to, unfortunately, you cannot have spaces in table names. Well, last time I checked. Yeah. Um, so I'm just I'm adding other sources, by the way. Um, so what's interesting about this, though, you know that there's no ending. Uh, the assumption, of course, is that I'm still John Smith. I'm still employed uh, by Microsoft as of today. So I can't really put an embed in because there is no embed for my current role. Um, but this one is pretty good. So just like before, I'm going to hit save. And I'm going to close this uh, Excel document. We're going to bring this table into, into uh, Power BI. 
So red flag and repeat. Nothing new here. We click that tile. We say we're going to pull from an extension. There we go. So I'm going to click the tick box and click transform data. And much like before, I pop this power query. Now, this little um, demo here I like um, in, the, in the Power Query screen because it shows you some of the advanced functionality of Power Query. In fact, more advanced than what I've shown you already. So mm -hmm. just like before, this gives us a proper name. I'm going to add a space at this point because Power Query can accept spaces. Press enter. Now, what I'm actually going to do at this point, I'm just going to kill this last step. Actually, no, I'll leave that in. We, we can leave that there. Um, now I'll get rid of it. Um, what I'm going to do is I want to replace this null with today's date. Because mm -hmm. that makes sense, right? Because when you looked at the Gantt chart, the role for the position that Microsoft had an end date, which is today. I mean, right. it makes sense. If you, if you don't have an end date, like if your end date is null, what would be the end of that bar? So we have to put a value in here. So I'm going to show you uh, some really advanced functionality in Power Query, more from a capability perspective, so you're aware of what this tool can do. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to click um, up here. I'm going to right-click the header. And in this case, I'm going to do a re replace value. So I'm just going to find replace, exactly the same as Excel. And I'm going to replace null, which is a reserved keyword in Power Query's lingo, which is this guy here, um, with, um, let's just put in a dummy. Well, what is today? So 2020, 33, 26. So we we'll put in today's date and press enter. Um, there we go. There's a bit of a problem with this, though. Tomorrow, when I go to refresh my data, Right. It's going to load in, and as you can see from the formula bar, it's going to load in yesterday or today's date. So we've hard coded something, mm -hmm. and hard coding anything in Power BI, sorry, in this Power Query screen, is is basically setting up alarm bells for me right now. Um, anytime you type in anything that's hard coded, you need to be very careful, very, very, very careful, uh, because the next time tomorrow when your data refreshes, it's going to run again that exact same hard coded value. And this is called future proofing. You don't want to do that. You want to make sure that this is dynamic. And so I'm going to show you how to do something really, really, really fancy. So instead of, you know, when I typed in the date, 2020-03-26, it replaced it with this piece of text up here. I'm actually going to replace that with a function. And the function itself is going to return whatever today's date is at that point in time. So I just happen to know the function off the top of my head. It's date time, dot local now. And that's it. So where before I had hard coded in numbers, now it's just dynamically getting whatever the current date is. And I press enter. And now, now you see here that it's filled in well exactly exactly right now, 7.32 and 44 seconds PM. Right. And so you'll note that I removed that last step called change type. That should always be the last thing you do before you load data to Power BI. So I'm going to re-add that 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 step now myself. And the way it works is that you you select inside the preview pane. You highlight all of your columns either by holding down shift or just like Excel hitting control A. You then you go to transform and you click detect data type. And this is going to add that changed data type step. And there we go. So now it's correctly identified almost all of the columns. Now, this is interesting. It's saying it doesn't know what this column type is, and rightly so, because Power Query distinguishes between columns of type date and mm -hmm. columns of type date time. So okay. what it's saying is, I don't, it's saying, Simon, I don't know what you want. Is this column of dates or is this column of date times? You're confusing me. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just going to forcefully say, hey, Power Query, interpret that as just date. Right. And there we go. And now this data is looking pretty good. We've got our start dates, end dates, company, title, and state. And state is wrong. I have not labeled that correctly. So I could go back to Excel to fix it. But just for the fun of it, let's just fix it here. So I'm going <laughs> to, I just noticed that, time, yeah, it's actually backwards. So I'm going to call this um, state query. Here I'm going to call state. And this one here I'm going to call, what was it? Roll title? Always oh, title. There you go. So, so there Simon, you go. there's a question at this point. Um, so you changed the column to be date. But uh, what would be some of the cases when date and time are both required? What would be an example? Um, that's, that's, okay, so there is an advanced answer to this. Um, and this is a best practice that I, I'll, I'll just 
I hope the person asking this question is advanced so they can appreciate my answer. When you do modeling or when you do data transformation mm -hmm. and you, you're serious about it, like you do this stuff professionally, you actually keep a date and time as two separate columns. Mm -hmm. you, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't have a date time column in any data, in any, in any sort of um, system, with the exception of some Linux timestamps in big data systems like Apache Spark. Excluding that, um, separate date and time. And that's especially true for Power BI. Okay. Because of, um, I won't go into detail, it's got something to do with speed, performance, and compression. But yeah, you should always keep um, your columns separate. So you'll never have a situation where you, you should never have a situation where you have date and time in one column. Great. Thank you. Yeah. So sorry for the advanced answers to that, but it's, it's, it's the best answer I should, I should probably give. And there's no real, real way to dumb that down. Um, if you do end up loading date time columns to Power BI, it's fine. You can still use the tool. Um, it's just if you've got big data, like if you're a few million or a couple of billion rows in Power BI, it's going to go slow. In fact, nice. you couldn't load a, a few billion rows with a date time column. Wonderful. Thank you. So there we go. I'm happy with the starter. And just like before, I'm going to go to the home ribbon and close and apply. So I should be able to finish the next in about, yeah, about 10 minutes. So we're going to have some fun this time. So we're going to dive more into these DAX formulas with this one. Um, but before I do, let's bring in that Gantt chart. My problem is that that Gantt chart is not a default visual. None of these that you see here are a Gantt chart. Which is why I'm going to give you, I'm going to show you um, custom visuals, which is a really neat feature in Power BI. So they are stored just by clicking into this ellipsis here. If I click that and say import from App Source, up will pop this um, this marketplace of visuals, and there's there's hundreds of them. There's a lot of just random visuals that you can bring in, like custom maps and and all sorts of crazy stuff. Um, but in this case here, I'm simply after. Oh. It's worth highlighting. It's my opinion that you should never use a visual from this marketplace that does not have this certified timestamp here. Right. Okay. If you if you use this one here, for example, no offense to who made this, but um, there is no guarantee that this will be updated and will be a reliable visual. It could break in a few months. Mm -hmm. um, my strong suggestion is to absolutely use the built-in visuals, and if for whatever reason you cannot use a custom visual maybe consider falling back to only the certified ones. So in this case here, I'm going to click the top one and click Add. And within a couple of seconds, there we go. We now have a new visual here on the right. And this is my Gantt chart. So I'm just going to click that, drag it to the white space over here, expand it. And you'll notice that there's a lot of options in this bad boy. Um, I haven't really used this one too much. I've only used it on, like I think, six or seven projects, mostly PMO projects. Um, project management office projects, so they love their game shots. Um, so, what we need, so what do we need for this one? So, it's kind of telling us what we need. We need start date and we need end date. So, let me expand my new table and I'm going to drag start date in here and I'm going to drag end date in here. And what else do we need? I think in, in my other one, we had, uh, let's take a look, we had, um, I'm trying to remember what was in the axis. That's right, there's company on the axis. So the company was, in this case, a task. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's not good. Oh, that's right. Um, um, the first issue, of course, now, you know, if you notice the axis at the top is daily. Right. So what I need to do is I need to click on the paintbrush. And once again, I'm not sure where this is kept. I think it's, I'm just going to poke around the options um, until I find the one that I need. Um, saturation limit. I need to set it from um, daily to annual or, or yearly. Uh, let's toss settings maybe. Oh. Data. Here we go. Um, let's change this to year. There we go. Now we've got a nice pretty Gantt chart. Yep. Um, you can go through and you can edit the settings. Like you can expand this along a little bit. Um, you can change the formatting of the state time that you see here. See, it's got the, the 12 um, a.m. Like you don't want to see that. There are settings in here for that. Um, it, it's all pretty straightforward. You can change also the height as well. So you have you, a lot of settings. I won't go through this in detail. Um, suffice to say, just take a look at my other report, and you can use those settings if you're interested. We'll see how I did it by looking at the other settings. There is one thing that I like to do, though, and that's to show the, the title um, to the right here. Mm -hmm. And um, I think I did that by uh, so technically a resource. So title is a resource. 
there we go right. and you can obviously change the color to make it gray you don't want that to be too hard hitting but i'll i'll just leave this here right now because i think that's i think everyone gets the point there's mm -hmm. your chart, and i think that actually looks pretty good as is obviously you want to configure this a little yeah. bit more to make it a, a little bit prettier and i think that's so, my favorite visual of all to be honest uh, i'm definitely going to update my resume to add that in now <laughs> yeah it tells a good story right um yeah. and what i like about it is it tells a story without showing numbers Mm -hmm. um, if you can show a visual that does not sh that tells the story that you want it to tell, and that visual doesn't have any numbers on it, bloody well done. That's a right. very good achievement because you're you're it's a phenomenal piece of information design, right? You're right. telling a story; it's clear, and the user doesn't have to waste time looking at numbers and comparing them mentally. No, the visual just tells the story, and that's what I love about this. I don't see numbers on this. the The only number I see is access up the top. Everything else is just immediately tells me the story. I mean, my eyes immediately go to this senior analyst and right. obviously the to delivery driver because they're the biggest. Um, very, very interesting. So let's get a little bit fancy. So I want to create um, on the left here, I want to create that uh, that map. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click, I think it's the shape map or um, where is it? I think it's the shape map. Uh, not field map. We want. Um, this one. Sorry, I'm just trying to find the visual. Actually, you know what? I'm pretty sure that this, <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure that what I'm the visual that I, I selected in the demo might be a preview feature. Let me just double check. Um, what I'm going to do right now is the Power BI um, settings, and there it is. So, if you want to replicate the shape map that I have in the the file that yeah, I provided for this demo on your computer, you're going to have to go to File, Options and Settings, Preview Features, and tick this. And then when I click that, with a bit of luck, it'll do it without me wanting to restart. No, it wants me to restart. Save this. It's going to close it. And I'll right-click and I'll open it. Um, so funny story, the shape map has been in preview for as long as I can remember. Mm -hmm. I think it's been in preview since end of 2015. Oh, wow. Um, for whatever reason, the team at Microsoft doesn't want to release it out of preview. This is very odd thing, but that said, it's a really it's a really good visual. I think it's production worthy. Um, I've used it in quite a lot of production reports, and it's, in my opinion, the best map visual. Mm -hmm. There is a Bing map visual. Um, in, it's too cluttered; it shows too much information. Whereas the shape map is very simple. Right. Anyway, so I've restarted Power BI, and what you should see on the right here is a new icon called the shape map. And so I'm going to select this one. I'm going to turn this into a shape map. And then you think all you need to do is actually we actually we should just be able to go to state and drag that into location. Now it's asking me um, what I wanted to actually show here because um, it's, it's obviously showing the color blue, but you can add color saturation if you want. So much like before where we did a count of rows, you could do a count of rows here and change the color saturation to be like a lighter shade of blue, for example. But I'm pretty happy with this. I think this is this is good enough for demonstration purposes. And just to show you a, a cool little feature of Power BI. Because this visual here and this Gantt chart here all come from the same table, they're somewhat connected. So I can actually interact with this one and it will affect my Gantt chart. So if I select the state here, Washington, that's Domino's. If I select um, this one over here, California, we get all the companies that I work for in California. And lastly, we get all the companies that I work for here. So these two are linked, but you'll note that um, oh, it actually goes, it should go the other direction as well. Yep, there we go. So I can click on uh, co-op and it shows me where I was um, a co-op at Contoso, um, but it won't affect the other visuals simply because the data comes from another table. Power BI doesn't know how a project talks to employment history. Mm -hmm. um, that's for an advanced class. So it does have that capability. It just can't do it um, without some more data prep and some more advanced technology. Right. So, so Simon, a quick question here. Yeah. How are you deciding which visuals uh, should take up more real estate than others? So as an example, we noticed that the um, the map there is so small, hmm. whereas the yeah. other visuals are big. So how, how are yeah. you deciding that? So first things first, maps are completely overrated. Um, I see them in so many reports. And the reality is, is that the first time you use that report, you probably use the map and you enjoy it. Nine times out of ten, the second time you use that report, you, you don't use the map, nor do you ever use it ever again. So I just wanted to include a map just to show you guys it has a capability. But the reality is that 
if this is a report that's going to be used like a like an operational report or an executive report on a monthly or you know weekly cadence, the map's going to be ignored nine times out of ten. They're just not going to use it. Right. So, um, but to answer the question, like you know, what do I give real estate to on the report versus some visuals and others? I have a couple of rules of thumb. Um, they are in our culture, we read from left to right, top to bottom. So mm -hmm. have your high level numbers to the to the top left of the of the screen and your more complex numbers um, down the bottom. So your more complex visuals down the bottom. So in a lot of my reports, I have table visuals down the bottom right or down the bottom. And in the top, I have cards going either across the top or, or cards going down the left. And a card is the visual that I was about to show you in a sec. A card is just a number. I'll, I'll do that for you right now, actually. So if I find the card visual, this guy here, it's just a very simple visual. And all it has is um, it just shows a number. And I might actually use this as a segue for calculating years of service. And we know we've got start date and end date. So what I'd like to show here is basically 2020, that we see up here, minus 2009, which is 11. So 11 years of service is a, is a number that I'd like to show here. Mm -hmm. And this is going to be some pretty advanced stacks. Um, I showed you before we did a count of rows, and that was pretty straightforward. So that's that's our first DAX formula. Let's kick it up a, a, a notch. I want to take this to the next level. So I'm going to right-click employment history and click new measure. And I've already got this guy on my clipboard. I'm just going to paste him in up the top. I'll zoom in a little bit. So there's my calculation for years of experience. I've got a measure called years of experience. That's what I'm calling it. And this is the formula. So I'm saying let's let's make a variable. And the variable is going to be the end date. So the maximum end date minus the minimum start date. So it's going to be, if I show you the Gantt chart, it's going to be this, this date right here, where my, the pixel where my mouse is. So that's mm -hmm. the maximum end date minus, let me just click out of this, minus the minimum end date, which is that pixel right there. So if I go back to the formula. So give me the maximum end date, subtract that from the, the minimum start date, and then divide it by 365. I could actually just make the formula of this, by the way. I could actually just put 365 there for the direction. But I just wanted to show that Power BI has something called variables. So okay. I made this formula here a variable called total days, and then I'm dividing that by 365. So now we've got that new measure here on the right. If I click on this card visual that I just made, oops, sorry, no mistake, I double clicked when I shouldn't have, bear with me. Ah, when you double click in Power BI, it's just with this horrible yeah. human thing. Um, so if I left click on this visual, I can drag in years of experience. And then we get 11 years of experience. So, so Simon, so, another quick question here. What is the best way to learn DAX syntax? Yes. Yeah, so, <laughs> um, oh boy. So let me just talk about the DAX syntax. So there are two leaders in the world for ducks and all best practice and all knowledge comes from these two guys. They're named Marco Russo and Alberto Ferrari. They're in a company called SQL BI. So every single book in Power BI in the world comes from, the knowledge in that book comes from their books. Mm -hmm. So if you want to learn ducks and you want to learn it properly, get any book from Alberto Ferrari and Marco Russo. They are without a doubt the top two leaders. Third place is, is not even close to these two guys. So get any book from them. Um, aside from that, um, just jump into it. Start playing around with sums and counts and mins and max and things like that. Mm -hmm. But here's a piece of advice, and this is actually a, a quasi quote from Alberto Ferrari. He said that DAX is not like other languages. In other languages, when you want to learn it, you simply jump on Google, you go to Stack Overflow, and you read the articles and you learn, you learn right. the language. Um, if you, if you try doing that with DAX, you'll never truly understand how it works. Mm -hmm. To truly understand how DAX works, you have to understand a feature of it called evaluation context. Now, I'm not going to go into detail into what evaluation context is in this demo, but just understand that if you want to learn DAX, the, one of the very first things you should ever do is find an article that explains evaluation context. Because if you don't understand that, then I strongly suggest that you don't bother learning the language. It's it's mm -hmm. you have to understand that 
to become comfortable with how DAX works. So you could stumble your way along by Googling articles and copy pasting the code, but you'll never truly understand it unless you learn evaluation context, which is just a theory around DAX. Great, thank you. And we might have to ask you to uh, help us uh, write some tips and tricks with some other sources of material that people can use. Yeah, absolutely. And there's a few books. Um, obviously, I mentioned the ones from SQL BI. So mm -hmm. um, the the definitive guide to DAX is the one that's the gold standard. Everything comes from every methodology in the world comes from that one single book. But it is advanced, right? It is a book that teaches. It's, it's called the definitive guide. Um, I, I think there are a lot lighter books out there. I don't know of them, but I'm sure they're out there. Maybe like an introduction to Power BI course. Um, for right. example, on EDX might be another way to do it. Or, you know, lynda.com. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if I were to kind of break down learning Power BI, I would say learn Power Query first because you can do that in Excel. By the way, if I just go back to Excel, no, I'll just quickly show you this. If I go back to Excel, Power Query is inside Excel. It does exist. So if I go to Excel file, click on data, guess what this is? This whole section here. Look familiar? Right. Get data from web. Launch Power Query Editor. It is inside Excel. So if you want to learn Power BI, start with Power Query inside Excel. Look familiar? It's exactly the same as it is in Power BI. So learn this window in Excel because everyone's comfortable with Excel. Learn use in Excel. Once you've learned Power Query, then jump into dragging and dropping here. Then finally jump into DAX and the screen here that I haven't shown, and that's where you establish your relationships between two. Wonderful. Um, I'm gonna pause there, by the way. I mean, there is one more visual that I won't, I won't bother making. It's just it's just a quick visual. Um, where is it? I'll just quickly go back to it. Yeah, there was one visual up here that grabs the latest role for any date range you select or any dimension you select. And so what I mean by that is that if I select the California dimension, we see that this updates accordingly to the latest position in California. Uh, likewise, if I click Washington, this is the latest position in the dimension that is Washington. Um, in the, yeah, so I'm just throwing a bit of power the other at, at you guys. So um, that's the last thing I wanted to do. I won't bother showing you that, that measure. It's, it's pretty advanced. It uses like three or four variables to do that one. So yeah, good, and I'll stop there. Um, are there any other questions? I think the timing is pretty good. Um, is there, or is there anything else you'd like me to uh, maybe touch on? Um, no, I think actually we're pretty good here. We're good to wrap up if you would like. Uh, just wondering if you can repeat some of the tips and tricks that you shared with us to wrap it all up. Yeah, so um, I, I would just say, yeah, learn Power BI, learn Power Query in Excel first, and then learn Power Query in Power BI. The experience is identical. So you'll transition immediately with no issue. Once you've become, com become comfortable with transforming and wrangling data to get it in a pivot table friendly format or a computer ready format, then you can move on to um, using DAX. The challenge I find most often is people load data as is. They load it with like dates going sideways in the Power BI and they start writing DAX and they wonder why it doesn't work. It's because you're, you're putting the cart before the horse. You need to transform data first using Power Query into what is good data before you can start doing DAX and making visualizations. The hard part, of course, is knowing what is good data. And I can say that that is generally pivot table friendly data. So it's usually very long, skinny tables of data. That's what pivot tables like. And we know that Power BI is basically a pivot table. Therefore, that's what Power BI likes as well. Um, what else do we have? I'd also say, Avoid adding physical columns to your data as well. So we've got three tables here. Um, I didn't really add columns to these. I could have. Like I could have added a column for years of experience. Uh, I didn't because adding columns is a bit of an anti-pattern. When you add a column, your file size gets bigger and your report gets slower. So try to add measures instead. The rule of thumb is add columns if you want an axis, like down here, or you want to filter, for example, um, if you want to turn something like a drop down box or something like that, add a column in those scenarios. But everything else, make a measure. Um, it'll, it'll make your reports run very quickly. Um, and the last thing I, I think I'll say is if you go to the view, um, I, I can up, uh, the ribbon up the top, almost always have Snap to Grid enabled. And just to show you what that is, if I untick this and I scroll a little bit, you'll see it's very smooth. I get a very smooth experience. I actually don't want that. 
because I'll end up with reports that are like this, that they're just not aligned properly. They're, they're off ever so slightly by a couple of pixels. And people will notice. But if I enable Snap to sorry, if I enable Snap to Grid, you'll note that it's very snappy. It's see how it's snapping. Um, that allows me to make sure that all my visuals are perfectly well aligned. Um, so yeah, always enable um, Snap to Grid when you're designing. Um, so no more tips, Gordon. Um, I'll, I'll call it a day. Um, unless there's any other questions. Oh, Gordon, I think we lost Gordon. Okay, guys, I um, hope you enjoyed the demo. Um, I think this will be available on YouTube at some point later. And then we'll move forward at that link. And I'll also provide the Power BI file as well. So I'll provide not this one, so not the, not the one that I made, but the actual pre made Power BI file and the supporting Excel file. Now, in order to refresh the data that you could download later from Google's um, um, Dropbox, just be aware that it's going to try and go to my computer. Like when you hit refresh, it's going to say, Cannot find the file in Simon's desktop. So what you need to do in order to get that file that you download working is to go to Power Query. In fact, I'll just do it here. So once you download it, go to Power Query by clicking Transform Data. Up will pop the Power Query screen. And there's a few extra things here. The one to focus on is this one here, which is the parameter. You simply need to change this to the file location of the Excel file on your computer. As you can see, it's pointing to the one on my computer. You don't want that. <laughs> you won't be able to refresh. So just make sure you do that to be able to refresh from the files that you'll download from Gungeon's um, uh, Dropbox. So that concludes the demo, guys. Uh, thank you very much for attending. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me at Gungeon. Um, I love training people with Power BI. I've trained a few thousand people. Um, I'm always happy to help, whether it's just a question over LinkedIn or whatever. Um, reach out to me, and I'll help where I can. Thank you.